morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself from a, uh, from a moment-to-moment basis, on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you're dealing with a health challenge or a loved one has a health challenge you want help with, and you're not getting any answers from the medical model, your drugs aren't helping you, and you want some solutions, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about formulations or ingredients or our truth skin health products or skin health issues, we're here for you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, head over to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We blog on the websites, have news stories as well, and videos on uh, criticalhealthnews.com especially. And, of course, you can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and help me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program for a one-time $25 fee. You can join the team and make some money at the same time. You can call 866-735-2470. They can give you the information, or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. All right, so we are continuing talking about glucosamine, a super fabulous supplement. A supplement most of you guys have heard of glucosamine. It, it's, uh, it forms the, uh, the bulk of the glucogel caps from longevity. Dr. Wallach's, one of Dr. Wallach's brilliant insights, he's had a lot of brilliant insights, of course, but one of them was the, was the idea that you could use cartilage to build cartilage. You could use collagen to build collagen. And this is what glucosamine is, is really the active ingredient, or at least one of the active ingredients in cartilage. And when you eat glucosamine, the body senses that blood glucosamine levels have gone up, and it assumes that that's because there's some damage in the body. When it sees little chunks of glucosamine or little chunks of cartilage in the blood, it assumes that the cartilage has somehow been damaged, and that's why the particles are in the blood. It doesn't know we've supplemented, and it upregulates the production of new connective tissue, and this is why glucosamine works, as well as chondroitin and cartilage itself. It's why bone soup is so important. It's why the amino acids that make up bone and, and connective tissue, bone being connective tissue, it's why these amino acids are so helpful for turning on the production of our connective tissue. Eat connective tissue, build connective tissue. Eat cartilage, build cartilage. Eat the amino acids for cartilage and connective tissue, build your own cartilage and connective tissue. That's basically the logic. Now, we've been talking about a specific kind of glucosamine that's relevant for the skin and digestive lining, particularly that's NAG, NAG, and acetyl glucosamine. In order to understand how important this stuff is, we've got to sort of talk a little bit about the structure of the body. From a healing and health perspective, as you know, if you listen to this program, the body's composed of cells. I know of no other program, no other health perspective that takes this approach. The body is composed of cells, and all health is cell health. All disease is cell disease. From a health perspective, we have 200 different types of cells. Put it this way, we got 200 different types of cells. But although there's 200 different types of cells, from a health perspective, they're all pretty much the same. 
You know, earthworm cells are pretty much the same as human cells. They can do studies on earthworm cells, or, or for that matter, fruit fly cells, and they can make assessments on the health value of a particular supplement or particular chemical, or they can make an assessment on, on genetics that applies to human beings or higher animals from fruit flies or from earthworms because cells are basically the same. They all need the same things. They all need food. They all need oxygen. They all need a clean place to do its work. And what they don't need is a doctor. Your cells don't need a doctor. In fact, a doctor can do nothing for the cells. The medical model can do nothing for the cells. That's why they don't know anything about the cells. That's why when you go to the doctor, you don't get better because the problem is in the cells. It's not in the gallbladder. It's not in the lungs. It's not in the heart. It's not in the brain. It's not in the joints. It's in the cells. Nobody has lung disease. We have lung cell disease. Nobody has heart disease. We have heart cell disease. Your doctor doesn't know this, can't do anything about it. So what he does is he works on the heart or the gallbladder or the liver or the organs because he's useless at the level of a cell. And I don't mean that as a knock on any particular doctors. It's a knock on the stupidity of the modern medical model when it comes to chronic long-term degenerative diseases. The medical model wants us looking at the organs when we're not healthy. Not only is this simplistic and ignorant, but it just doesn't work. And this is why medicine is such a failure when it comes to degenerative long-term chronic diseases. Tell that to your doctor. Doc, it's a cell issue, no? And what are you doing for my cells? Oh, you're killing them. You're drugging them. You're radiating them. You're extracting them. How's that going to make me better? Ask him. All right. So you have four types of cells, they gather, or four, four types of stuff that are made up of the different cells. The stuff is connective tissue, connective stuff, tissue just means stuff, muscle tissue, muscle stuff, nervous tissue, and surface tissue. And the whole thing is, the, the way that we're structured is the muscles and the connective tissue are embedded around each other and they make up the bulk of what we are. They make up about 80% of our body. And then the whole thing is wired electrically and then... Uh, and then you have a covering. That's basically the body. You've got meat, you've got electrical wiring, and you've got covering, and that's us. The most fundamental of these tissues is the connective tissue slash muscle tissue. It's hard to distinguish between the two. I, I shouldn't say that. You can distinguish between the two from a, with a microscope, but because they're kind of connected to each other, it's basically one system, the connective tissue muscle system. As any massage therapist or role for a body worker will tell you, they're, in, they're integrated with each other. And they make up a, the vast majority of what we are. It makes us, uh, it, it gives us our, the visual appearance of health. It's what makes us stand tall and strong when we're young, and it's what makes us shrivel when we're old. You ever notice how old people are shriveled up and they're shorter? My mom is, is melting before my very eyes. She gets shorter every year. Every year I see her, she gets shorter and shorter and shorter. This is what happens when we get old because our connective tissue shrivels up. This is what crepey skin is about. If you've ever watched that, that dumb commercial about healing your crepey skin with a topical product, you know, if you listen to this talk about connective tissue, that you can't do it. You cannot take care of crepey skin by rubbing stuff on the surface of the skin. We're going to talk about skin here in a minute. When the thin, skin is wrinkly and thin and crepey, you got a connective tissue problem. When your blood vessels break down, you got a connective tissue problem. Do you know Alzheimer's disease is a connective tissue problem? Do you know your brain is made up of connective tissue? Brain cells, most of your brain cells are connective tissue cells. They're called glia, G-L-I-A. Maybe you've heard of this. Glioma is a cancer of the brain cell. Isn't that amazing? Your brain is connective tissue. And when you have Alzheimer's disease, guess what? You got a connective tissue problem. Those plaques that they're talking about all the time, the amyloid plaques and the tau protein, blah, 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 blah. That's all connective tissue. Alzheimer's disease is arthritis of the brain, as I've said for years. You don't need a vaccine for Alzheimer's disease any more than you need a vaccine for, for uh, arthritis. It's a degenerative disease. It's a problem of the connective tissue, brain connective tissue in the case of Alzheimer's disease. You're not going to hear that anywhere, folks. So this makes, all of this stuff makes connective tissue building super duper important. And that, my friends, is where NAG comes in. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back. 
back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Got blog posts and news stories as well, videos, all kinds of health information. It's all free, of course. I'm on a mission, folks. I want to help change the world via nutritional supplementation and via knowledge, knowledge about how the human body works. Our lack of knowledge is killing us. My people perish for lack of knowledge, as it says in the Bible. Our lack of knowledge is killing us. And it's not doctors that are killing us, even though Alexander the Great famously said, I am dying from the hands of too many doctors. He said this 200 years B.C. And this is kind of this perspective that we have about the medical model, or many of us have about the medical model that you know kills people. And it's easy to look at it as such because 100,000 plus people die from their drugs, more probably, I don't even know, probably close to a million people a year die from all kinds of medical screw ups, including drug problems. All right, not a million people, maybe a couple hundred thousand, but certainly a million people are, are maimed. But it's not the medical model, it's our lack of knowledge. And it's not just our lack of knowledge, it's our doctor's lack of knowledge, because we don't look at how this whole thing is put together. We buy the dogma. A dogma is defined as, as something that people believe without scientific evidence. They just take on faith, and it came from the world of religion initially, but we have medical dogma. Things that people just believe throughout history. There have been, peop- there have been, uh, uh, there have been visionaries in the world of medicine throughout history that have been laughed at. Semmelweis, a famous uh, doctor in the 19th century, who said maybe doctors should wash their hands after they uh, work on corpses and then go deliver on, before they go deliver babies. People, that's what doctors were doing. They were delivering babies after they worked on the corpses. And all these women were dying of these horrific deaths. And Semmelweis said, you know what? Maybe doctors should wash their hands. And he got, not only did he get laughed at, he died, in a, he died a broke, penniless pauper because he couldn't work, because he was so crazy, because he thought doctors should wash their hands. And this is how, this is the world of science, unfortunately. In the book, uh, uh, Structure of, Structure, Structures of Scientific Revolutions, this guy Thomas Kuhn said, science progresses funeral by funeral. He meant the old way has to die off before the, the new way can take root. Well, this is the new way, folks. If you're listening to the bright side, this is the new way. It shouldn't be the new way. It should just be common sense, but that's how it goes. All diseases sell disease. Our cells are, are woven together into four types of stuff. The vast majority of the stuff is connective and muscle tissue. When we're old, when we're dying, when we're breaking down, it's a connective tissue problem from head to toe, including Alzheimer's disease and including arthritis and including heart disease. These are all connective tissue problems. When we look at each other and we see each other as being old or young, we're looking at our connective slash muscle tissue. And this is where NAG becomes so darn important because, and, and substances like NAG. NAG is just active, it's super active. But glucosamine and cartilage, this is why I talk about bone soup. And I've talked about bone soup now for decades, since I was in pharmacy school. Bone soup, chicken soup with the bones. The liquid cartilage builds our bulk, our meat, our connective tissue. The extra, the connective tissue, and I, I talked a little bit about this the other day, the, ex, the connective tissue is woven in the stuff that's outside cells, the extracellular stuff. They call it the extracellular matrix. When I talk about raisin bread, as the body being raisin bread, the cells are the raisins, the extracellular stuff is the, is the bread. The extracellular stuff is mostly connective tissue. And it all comes from a specific type of cell that is absolutely critical to understand if you can understand how to be healthy. And all skincare professionals know about this cell. It's called the fibroblast. The fibroblast is the holy grail of skincare. Skincare ingredients are measured by their activity, or, or effective skincare ingredients are measured by their activity on the fibroblasts. And while it's true that there's lots of different ingredients that can activate the fibroblasts, there's only two that will actually really do it in vivo. That means in life. There's lots of them that will do them in a test tube. Every year I go to a, an ingredient show in New York where I learn about skincare ingredients, and they're all got all kinds of ingredients that activate the fibroblasts. Do they activate them in real life, in vivo? Very infrequently, hardly ever, never, except for vitamin A and vitamin C and their derivatives. Skin is multi-layered, and it's very easy to forget that. 
when we look at each other's skin, it looks like one uniform substance. So we think we could just rub stuff on the surface. The, the truth of the matter is it's very difficult to get where the action is. It's looking at the skin and seeing it as one homogenous structure deceives us into believing that we can just rub stuff on the surface and hope for the best and expect to get some results. You can't. You have to be deeper. The skin is made up like an iceberg with a top that you can see and 90% of which you cannot see underneath. And that's where the good stuff is. The stuff we see is like icing on a cake, but the cake is underneath. Now, of course, the main way you want to build your skin cake, if you will, is via nutrition. Substances like protein and vitamin C and N-acetylglucosamine, one of the best anti-wrinkle supplements you could use. But you can do things topically for the cake as well, and that's where vitamin A and vitamin C comes in. Vitamin A and vitamin C build the cake topically. That's a miracle. That's unbelievable. Nothing else can do that. You rub vitamin A and vitamin C on the skin in their right forms, not in all forms. Vitamin A has to be in the retinol or retinoic acid form, which is only available by prescription or in very fancy salons or, of course, via truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. You need a good amount of retinol. This is what I discovered as a compounding pharmacist for the skin. For 30, almost 30 years, for 20 plus years, I was a compounding pharmacist for the skin where I made skincare products for people who had aging, broken, wounded, traumatized skin. And what I discovered was there's only two types of vitamin A that will have effects, but man, will they have effects. And what I also discovered was vitamin C is important, but it has to be in the right form. That's why I came up with truthtreatments.com with our truth health products. There are ways that you can use the skin's two most important vitamins. They're vehicles, delivery systems, Truth, uh, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth 5% Retinol Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all ways for you to deliver vitamin C and vitamin A to the skin. They're not skincare products. I didn't develop a skincare line. I hate that idea, skincare line. I got so many people. Oh, I got a skincare line. I got a skincare line. My new skincare line. Movie star. My new skincare line. What do we need? We really need another skincare line? No, we don't need another skincare line. But what we do need is a way to deliver the skin's two most powerful anti or anti-aging and uh, anabolic building substances of the skin, and that's what the truth is, and that's the truth. Not a skincare line. Active ingredients, medicines for your skin in the delivery system that transports those active ingredients to the lower levels, to the fibroblasts that make the connective tissue. So you got a surface on the skin, you got the good stuff underneath. Good stuff underneath, by the way, has a lot of blood. There's no blood on the surface. Have you noticed this? There's no blood on the very top of your skin. If you see blood, you've gotten into the dermis. Surface tissue has no blood. It's basically just the very surface is just hard, dead stuff. And then a little bit underneath, you've got some viable living cells that are making moisture factors and such. But the good stuff is where the blood is. It's where the 90% of the skin is. It's where the connective tissue is. And it's called the dermis. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will uh, have more good health information and your phone calls when we come back from our break. Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you're in the Arizona area, I'll be doing talks October 10th, 11th, and 12th. That's next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. At, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona on the 10th. I'll be in Gold Canyon, Arizona on the 11th. And Sun City, Arizona on the 12th. Call Rebecca Kozak at 480-842-1888. 480-842-1888. Eighteen eighty-eight. If you want more information, hope to see you there. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol Five Percent Gel, made with vitamin C and retinol, both together in one product, and the good stuff—the stuff I use myself, the stuff I've been using now for for twenty-five years—that's really why I came out with the Truth. I've been giving my friends this, these products and my mom these products now for twenty-five years because it's what I've been using for twenty-five years. Now you can use it too. And I could have used anything, folks. I had a laboratory filled with topical skincare ingredients, most of which were either fillers or waxes or 
didn't do anything. But uh, the vitamin A and the vitamin C and the transdermal stuff, I would make my own skin health products and use them for myself and my friends. Now you can do the same thing. You can use the products I've been using for 30 years, 20 plus years, and my friends and family call up. Uh, you can uh, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and purchase products right off the website. Okay, so let's see here. Tomorrow we'll continue, uh, on our next Bright Side episode, I should say, we'll continue talking about N-acetylglucosamine and the skin. We'll tell you about alpha-hydroxy acids and the relationship between alpha-hydroxy acids. I'll give you a little clue. Glucosamine, N-acetylglucosamine, is a version of alpha-hydroxy acids. If you haven't been able to use alpha-hydroxy acids topically, now you have a little clue. You can eat your alpha-hydroxy acids by taking NAG, and you can apply it topically on your skin, and we'll be talking about that as we continue talking about building connective tissue all over the body for the health of the body and the appearance of the body and the beauty of the body using NAG and acetylglucosamine. All this, by the way, is uh, we start talking about all this because we were talking about fiber and we were talking about the ketogenic diet and we're going to come full circle and continue talking about both of those subjects as we uh, as time moves on on the bright side. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is from the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami, published in Developmental Cell. Cancer cells have Alzheimer's disease, too. I like that. You know, cancer cells make the same kind of plaques that uh, you find in Alzheimer's disease patients. And when they suppress the formation of the plaques, the cancer cells go right to doing their business. It turns out, apparently anyway, that when these plaques are formed, cancer cells stop progressing. They stop metastasizing. Hmm, how interesting is that? The fibrosis, the amyloid plaques, are actually protective against cancer. And when these amyloid bodies, these amyloid plaques, they're not plaques in the cell, they're, they're little pieces in the cell. When they disaggregate, as it says here in this article, the cancer cells become active again. Hmm, this is what I've been saying. Fibrosis, amyloid plaques, these are protective mechanisms. Fibrosis is a protective mechanism. In the case of cancer, fibrosis shuts down, apparently according to this article, shuts down the metastases and growth of cancer cells. But it also has a cushioning effect. Pulmonary fibrosis is how the body responds to cigarette smoke or damage. Brain fibrosis is how the body responds to sugar damage. Fibrosis in the, in the uterus is a, another kind of damage that can occur. Fibrosis in the body, cells producing too much fiber is a protective mechanism. The, act, the, the object is not to stop the fibrosis, but to stop whatever the body is protecting, is to remove whatever the body is protecting itself from. All right, 844-236-6010. Let's go to California and welcome David to the Bright Side. Good morning, David. Yes. Um, hi, Ben. Um, hey. I've been um, having periodic episodes of, of um, bad headaches and nausea, which sometimes can last up to two days, and it, it usually occurs. I wake up with them. I go to bed feeling fine, and I wake up with them. And um, Do you wake up early? Uh, pardon me? Do you wake up really early, or how early do you wake up? Um, around 6.30. Okay. Uh, that's not unusual if you're going to get a headache that you'd get it at that time of the day because that's when your cortisol spikes. Now, would you say that it's a mi it sounds like a migraine? Have you been diagnosed that way? No, I, ha I haven't. I haven't actually been. I've been just to a regular doctor, not you know, a neurologist or anything like that. But well, they can, not much a neurologist about can... migraines and stuff. Mine doesn't really fit that bill. Okay, you don't have the the uh, the, the visual thing. The oh, aura, not at they call. All. You don't have any of that stuff, so, and no. uh, you don't know it's coming because you're sleeping. Do you ever get yeah, it during exactly. the day? You know, I mean, if I wake up in the night, say to use the bathroom, if it's going to be there, all of a sudden I'll wake up with a I'll wake up with a bad headache. Even you can wake up with a bad headache even before say four in the morning or three in the yeah, morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So a couple things. First of all, you don't just have headaches. No, I realize right. that. I'm from my okay, good. For a long time. Okay. Long. All right. You get that. That's a, that's a very important point because you go to the neurologist, they're going to look at your head. Your problem's not in your head. Your problem is your body is under major distress for this kind of for this to occur at, at any time. But I assume it's happening free, somewhat frequently. Correct? Yeah. Well, it, it used to be. Um, very infrequent, and it's becoming more frequent, maybe once I, a month now. 
that's so you got to get to the bottom of this, all right? So there's three main systems. I, you've heard me say this a million times. There's three main systems involved in all chronic progressive ish, health issues, including migraines and or headaches and nausea, and that is the blood sugar system, the digestive system, and cortisol. So those are the three elements you're going to have to work with. Cortisol is the quickest way to, is is the quickest of the three to resolve, and you can resolve it pretty darn quickly if you just do some slow deep breathing. This is the power of slow deep breathing. It will lower your cortisol quicker than anything else. Also, hot water, which opens up blood vessels and facilitates breathing as well, or oxygenation as well. So uh, anything you could do to, f to improve oxygenation, sit on the couch practicing slow, deep breathing, even in the middle, even when you wake up with a headache. Have you done that? Have you tried doing that? And not when I've woken up. I've tried it during the day, yes. Try it when you wake up. In fact, try it even when you don't have a headache when you wake up. Why? Because uh, headaches are triggered by uh, vasomotor symptoms, blood vessel symptoms, opening and closing of blood vessels. Vasomotor means opening and, blo op opening and closing of blood vessels. And this is what triggers the headache. So headaches are triggered by dysfunction and opening and closing. Typically, there's an opening and then there's a rebound closing. So oxygenation, one of the main things oxygenation does is it vasodilates. It opens up blood vessels. Does it make sense? You follow me? Yes, it does. Okay, so that'll work quickly. You want to be doing it throughout the day. You want to be doing it when you wake up in the morning healthy. And you definitely want to be doing it when you have a headache. Slowly is the operative word. Please do not do it too fast because that will make matters worse. Deeply is also important. Into your belly. Make your whole body a lung. Into your belly. Belly goes out when you inhale and it comes in when you exhale. And then thirdly, the rhythm is very, very important. Make sure you're getting into a nice, slow, even rhythm. This is where the body relaxes. A headache is, is the manifestation of overactive sympathetic, uh, too much sympathetic nervous system activity, stress, emergency, whatever you want to call it. So we're calming the body down, step number one. Step number two, you have to have zero tolerance for sugars and anything that spikes blood sugar. Go ketogenic. Go coconut oil. In fact, you should be doing your prime candidate for the ketogenic diet. And then thirdly, if there's any digestive distress, you want to lay, you want to uh, link it to problem food, uh, link it to the problem foods, and then eliminate those foods. Hang on, we'll finish up when we come back. All right, David. Thank you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back right after this. Side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844 236 6010 is our number. 844 236 6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Talking to David in California and anybody else out there who's got chronic headaches or headaches with nausea or migraine headaches or menstrual uh, headaches connected to uh, the menstrual cycle. And those, by the way, are the two main two major reasons why people get headaches are the hormone estrogen, which is linked to the digestive system, and the hormone insulin, which is linked to blood sugar, also the digestive system. Yes, estrogen issues need to be considered to be digestive issues because of the relationship between estrogen in the liver and estrogen in bile and estrogen in probiotics and estrogen in the intestine and estrogen pancreas and estrogen in the stomach as well. Uh, David, you there? Yes. All right, a couple things. First of all, we talked about breathing. We talked about st stabilizing the blood sugar. Uh, piece number three, the last piece of the puzzle is work on digestive symptoms. I I can almost guarantee you that you've got something percolating in your digestive tract. Some kind of food allergies, food intolerances. Uh, go by your bowel movements, runny stools, or constipation, both. Go by gas, bloating, heartburn, etc. And then eliminate foods associated with those symptoms. And then uh, make sure you're using probiotics and good bacteria, as well as vegetable fiber. You know if you've listened to this program, you know the drill. Yeah. Uh, one last piece of the puzzle, though, or one last thing to say, is uh, pregnenolone can have a very nice calming effect on the body and can be very helpful for anybody dealing with headaches, chronic headaches or migraine. Uh, migraine headaches also, pre because this is called because of the est estrogen relationship. Remember, pregnenolone balances out estrogen, as does progesterone, as How does... Do pregnenolone? I mean, is it a Off the internet. Or? Yeah, it's a supplement. Just get it off the internet. Google pregnenolone, 100 milligrams okay. a day. Worst thing that will happen is it'll make you a little tired. That's about all. Progesterone cream may help you. DHEA, you've heard of that, I'm sure. That might help you. DHEA, maybe 10 milligrams a day. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to tell you. I think that's something sticking the, in my and mind. The longevity products, which I take a, a fair amount. Um, Healthy Star Pack, um, Fucoid Z, Ultimate Selenium. Uh, and nightly yeah. essence, 
and the nightly essence. Don't forget your nightly essence. That's super important. You might want to try the ultimate niacin. That's got some vasodilating blood vessel opening properties, and it's um, also help you with your blood sugar if you've got any issues there. How old are you, by the way? I'm 60. And uh, are you on any medication? No. They didn't give you any drugs. Well, it's a good thing you didn't go to a neurologist because you would have gotten, you would have gotten. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't wanted you, to, but I mean, I, I just, you don't need one. You I don't need a neurologist. Kind of getting over one of those, and it's almost like a, a two-day affair now. That's uh, and with this kind of hangover afterwards. Cause that's just, awful. That's awful. Like what happened? You know. Are you doing BTT? Make sure you do extra BTT when you have that hangover. Yeah, I, from do, I take it twice a day. And do extra and sip it throughout the day when you okay. have that, that headache. See if you can link foods that you ate before you went to bed or, you know, in the afternoon. Whenever yeah, you, I'm trying the to day do that day. now. See yeah. if there's a connection there. Absolutely. And then uh, I would be going ketogenic for sure, and I would actually be doing a two- or three-day fast for sure uh, just to clear the decks. And you okay. may find, if you find that when you fast, your headaches go away, that's going to be a really good piece of information for you. Yeah, that would be, that would be worth it. Uh, yeah, will you let me know? Of it, you're kind let of me know anyway either. Because you don't feel like eating. Well, that's good, but you want to catch it before. You don't want to have to right. deal with yeah. that. Right. So uh, let me know. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. if you let me know. Either send me an email, Ben at KSCO dot com, or call us back. I'd like to know what you find out, and we could help some folks. Yeah, I'm on your listen to your radio, the KSCO. That's what I listen to you on it as it is. So no, no, my email is KSCO dot com. Ben at KSCO. No, I know that, but I mean, I, I, KSCO is a station I listen to you on. Okay, are you in Santa Cruz? Yeah. All right, good. You listen Actually, to KSCO. I, heard you, uh, I went and saw you speak at. Uh, Oh, this is a couple, two, oh. three years ago. Okay, cool. So I'm sure I'll recognize you if I see you again. I'll be out there in Santa Cruz hopefully in the next few months. Oh, good. I, and I, I love Santa Cruz. Definitely go and listen to you. You're, you're, you put on quite a, quite a good presentation. I appreciate that. And by the way, Santa Cruz is so awesome. My home away from home, I have to say. And you people know, in Santa I would Cruz. never argue with you about that. They're just a beautiful, wonderful place. And you know what the best part about Santa Cruz is? And it's not the weather. I'll tell you that. The best part about Santa Cruz is the people. They got. They're smart. They're interesting. They're uh, well. They're thoughtful people, and uh, it's just a pleasure to go out to it, Santa Cruz. It, it, and meet I, the folks. I would never. I, the only drawback to Santa Cruz these days is the traffic. Everybody wants. And to the traffic there. sucks. That is definitely true. The traffic's <laughs> awful. So, but, All uh, right, David. Be good. Thank Have a you good very day. Much. Have a good. All right. Good to talk to you. Love Santa Cruz. Absolutely love Santa Cruz. All right. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. Carl, the Truth Raider. What's good going morning, on, man. brother? How hey, you doing, man? Uh, yeah, I got a couple things to talk about really quick here. We're running out of time here, but uh, yeah, to touch on that subject of migraines, apparently the, the subject there is uh, suffering from. A lot of it's root to potassium, magnesium, iodine, selenium, and certain other type of nutrients and electrolyte deficiencies. No kidding. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. true. I completely Absolutely. agree with that. So you you know, you mentioned something. BC. Yeah, you mentioned iodine. People don't realize iodine is a very important brain health nutrient. Everybody Correct. thinks about it for the thyroid, but uh, but one of the major signs of iodine deficiency in, in pregnant moms is something called cretinism, where you get babies who have uh, insufficient brain development. So iodine is one of the most important supplements for a pregnant mom uh, to be taking for her bra baby's brain, and also uh, babies should be getting uh, not necessarily supplemental iodine, but if, they're, uh, if mom is getting iodine uh, as a supplement, it'll come out in the breast milk. Babies should be getting making sure that you should be making sure your baby gets enough iodine as well through breast milk of course that's the way to do it so that's Absolutely. a good point thank Absolutely. you for raising that up Carl yeah. what's going on is that what you want to say or something else? well no, else? I have something to talk about but it'll you know it segues into the subject I want to speak about it's also okay. possibly that the individuals probably you didn't ask him if he happens to drink wine or, or, or any type of alcohol yeah. spirits that that also triggers my migraines as well do you get migraines not not very often but uh, when I do you I double up on, uh, believe it or not, I take Concord grape juice. You know, and that I helps the migraine? That, within a few hours hmm. or minutes to a few, up to a few hours, it turns from the pain all over the body to like a warmth and to like a pressure, and then it just, the pulsating, and then it disappears. What proof is your grape juice? Just using it each and every no, time. No, no, what, uh, <laughs> what, what proof? How much alcohol is in the grape juice? 
Well, none. No? <laughs> well, oh, I thought sugar. it was special grape well, juice. It's got sugar, tons of sugar in it, and sugar does convert into alcohol. That is true. Well, I don't know, but I don't know necessarily about that. But here's the thing. What you may be experiencing is hypoglycemia migraine headaches or headaches that are associated yeah. with low blood sugar. Right. And sometimes, low, and I forgot, to, actually, that's a good point, Dave. Um, I forgot to mention that to Dave. Low blood sugar can trigger a migraine headache. Hey, Dave, if you're listening, uh, you may be you may be suffering, you may be noticing the effects of low blood sugar. So maybe a little bit of protein before you go to bed. Anybody who's dealing with things like waking up quickly in the middle of the night or waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to go back to sleep or even perhaps migraines or headaches when you wake up may be dealing with the effects of low blood sugar. During the night, our body is doing, doing its chemistry. It's doing business, so it's using sugar. And if you, have, uh, if you don't have any sugar in your system, you're going to go into low blood sugar hypoglycemia states in the middle of the night or first thing or early in the morning, and that can create a problem. So having a little bit of protein Protein before you go to bed, a little bit, uh, say bone broth protein or some easy to digest protein, uh, fish or, or, or a bone soup or just a little bit before you go to bed. That can help you if you're one of those folks that wakes up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. Or if uh, you're listening, Dave, that might help you with your migraines. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carl. Oh, no, no worries. That's uh, perfect, perfect advice there. I'm going to try that to myself, just get myself in the habit of having some bone soup before I go to bed. That's a, little that's bit, a good yeah. idea to have. Now, thyroid issues. Yes. If I'm experiencing some type of like a sh- kind of sharp discomfort pain around and they're like shooting and they only last like a quarter of a second, but I get them occasionally, is that a sign of either hypothyroidism or is that hyper? Where? Like at, generally in the body? Right. Right around the throat, the throat area. Right uh, I don't. I don't necessarily know. I'd attribute that to the thyroid, but there's a lot of musculature around the throat, and if you're going into uh, uh, sympathetic mode, you may be getting some. You may be feeling some contraction in there. Notice if there's something. What you want to notice in order to, to answer your question, what you want to notice, you should answer your own question, and what you want to notice is what's happening right before you feel that. That's basically how you do this whole health thing. What did I do just before I felt that? What did I do just before I felt the contraction in my throat, what, or, the, or however you want to describe it? What did I do before I had my, my digestive health issue? What did I do before I had my migraine headache? What did I do before? That's the operative question to ask yourself if you're dealing with some kind of health challenge. What have I just done? And fl- that's why I always say flare-ups are your best friend, because then you can really see, what did I just do? Uh, sometimes if it's just low level and chronic, it's hard to say, what did I just do? Because it's always happening. But when you have a flare-up, then you can say, what did I just do? And that goes for you too, Carl. What did I just do? That's the operative question. All right, my man. Got to motivate. Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Hope to see you Monday, October 10th, Tuesday, October 11th, Wednesday, October 12th, if you're in the Phoenix Gold Canyon or Sun City West area, call Rebecca Kozak, 480-842-1888. Check out my Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel at truthtreatments.com. And please join the Brightside Ben team. Let us, let's change the world together, and you can make some money at the same time. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up right from Critical Health News, PharmacistBen.com or uh, BrightsideBen.com. All right, have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.